Hey there, Jeff Snow, pastor at First Baptist Church, welcoming you to another uh, short message, short talk here on our YouTube channel as we continue to um, practice safe physical distancing. But I'm glad that you're able to be here, whether you're a member of First Baptist Church or whether you're just somebody who just found us online and wants to hear what we have to say. It's been interesting. I, I um, want these messages to be kind of not dated so that because they'll be here on YouTube for years and you can go back and check on them. But at the same time, I also want to talk about what's going on in, in the world around us with the coronavirus and everything. Um, today, I think we're going to move to a little, something a little bit different. Um, there is this book that churches often follow called the lectionary. Now, we Baptists don't usually follow it, but a lot of Anglicans and a lot of denominations around the world will follow the lectionary. And they are scripture passages that are read every Sunday. And so, and it's used around the world so that this, many, many churches will be reading the same scripture passages um, on the same Sunday. And on this particular Sunday, the psalm that's being read is Psalm 116. And stuck in the middle of Psalm 116 is a scripture verse that in a time in our lives was very important to our family. And uh, so I want to share with you the scripture verse and why. Again, using our very high tech system here, here's the scripture verse. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Psalm 116, verse 15. And that verse became very real to us at uh, my grandmother's funeral in 1988. My grandmother was always known to us as Sheppy's nanny because, you know, different families will have you know, two sets of grandparents and you try to define them by calling them Oma and Opa or Nana and Papa and different things. And we determined whatever reason that we would define our grandparents by their pets. My dad's parents had this gray, uh, gray blackish cat that was mean and we were told as kids to never ever go near and that thing was Smokey. So his parents were Smokey's nanny and Smokey's grandpa. My mom's parents had a German shepherd named Sheppy. Makes sense. And so they were Sheppy's nanny and Sheppy's grandpa and long after the pets had, had met their demise, those names stuck. My mom was the first person to become a Christian in her family. She probably may have had some Christians in her extended family, but in her immediate family, she became a Christian through the influence of a friend when she was 16 years old. And uh, through my mom's witness, my, her parents, my grandparents, became Christians in their later years, in their 50s and 60s. And I have quite a few books probably in this collection here that belonged to my grandmother. And you can see she would write in, in her books in, in the margins and, and have all kinds of notes in them. Um, so she became a Christian in her 50s, probably, yeah, 50s, maybe early 60s. Um, and like a number, many more people in those days than today, she was a smoker and a lifelong long smoker. And so at one point in her life in 1980, 81, she contracted cancer in her jaw and she had to go through chemotherapy and eventually have half of her jaw and her neck removed. And in the process of doing that, some complications arose and she died for a couple of minutes. They were able to bring her back and she has written out and has told the story of what she saw in those couple of minutes where she died. And it was very beautiful. And, uh, but when she was brought back to life, and lived for a number more years, I think she felt that the Lord had given her those extra years for a particular reason. And for the next seven years, she served the Lord in many ways, but the most particular way was through phoning shut-ins. When my grandmother, her health wasn't great. She, was, and she lived out in the country in a rural area, didn't drive herself. And so she was pretty well shut-in, didn't get out a whole lot. But she would get on the phone and talk to people who were lonely, who were shut in. Um, she even got to know some radio open line hosts, you know, the, the old radio shows that used to be on all night and people would phone in the overnight hosts and, and get some very different types of people phoning in. And she would connect with those 
hosts and find and, and connect with the people who phoned in and were particularly lonely or had just needed someone to talk to. And um, so she had a whole list of people that she would talk to. And what was significant, I thought, is because of her cancer surgery in her jaw, um, her saliva glands were dead. I think even her, her, her sense of taste was seriously affected. Her ability to eat, eat solid food was affected. And so she would eat this, would drink this protein drink. She basically lived off that, and that was her saliva. And yet she talked for hours on the phone, which, if you know it, it, under normal circumstances would create very dry mouth, but for her, even more so. But she put um, serving God and serving others ahead of her discomfort and ahead of her pain. Um, eventually in 1988, seven years later, the cancer returned and she passed away. And I spoke at her funeral and it was around this scripture verse, which was, the Lord gave us during that time which is so important to us, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Why? Now, why would the Lord consider death, and especially death of his saints, to be something that would be called precious? Well, the first, I guess, and the most obvious would be that in dying, the believer dying, they are called home to heaven. They are called home to be fully in the Lord's presence. We have the opportunity to live in the presence of the Lord and experience his fullness of joy even here on earth, but it's nothing compared to being in the presence of the Lord in heaven, where we get to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. So in that sense, the death of his saints is something precious. When we, when we take Christ's death as our own, when we say with, Christ, with the Apostle Paul, I have been crucified with Christ, and yet not I live, but Christ lives in me. When we are dead to our sin, but alive in Christ, then God says that is something precious when sin has become dead to us. We are, we are dead, we are free from the penalty of sin. In Christ's death, he took on the penalty of sin on the cross, and we no longer have to pay that. We're free from the power of sin, through his death and resurrection, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. We are able not to sin. Even though we are humans and we will still mess up, we aren't slaves to sin. We don't have to. We have the ability not to sin through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then in heaven, for eternity, we are free from the presence of sin. There will, there will come a day. There will come a day. I love this. Faith Hill sings that song, There Will Come a Day. If you ever find it on YouTube, it's incredible. But the idea that it will be no more sickness, no more pain, no more sin. And we will be totally dead to sin. So when that death happens, and we said to Christ, okay, I, I'm going to forgive me my sins. I'm now dead to sin and alive in Christ. The Bible says that a huge party goes on in heaven. But the angels rejoice. It's precious. And it's a cause for rejoicing. That's why the death of his saints is something precious. As we grow as Christians, we become dead. And part of being a Christian is becoming dead to our own desires dead to our own rights. We talk a lot about rights today. I find myself getting caught up sometimes in, well, I have a right, I have a right to do things. And, but as Christians, we defer our rights to what God wants in our lives. Um, we give up our way of doing things, and we trust that God's way of doing things is better. Jesus said to his followers, take up your cross and follow me. And it always strikes me as significant that when he said that to his followers, he had not yet gone to the cross. The cross and Jesus were not associated with each other when he said that to his disciples. All they heard was, take up your instrument of execution and follow me. They understood it as, as an instrument of death. Following Jesus means dying to yourself. And when we do that more and more in our lives. That is something precious to the Lord, something that he rejoices in, something that he has created us for, to live beyond ourselves and to live for him. And then, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints when his saints are dead to our own kings. And I think of my grandmother who, like I said, for seven years, was not, you know, was um, recovering from, from that having cancer, um, with half of her face removed, 
no saliva glands, and yet he spent hours on the phone talking to people who needed to be encouraged, who needed to be blessed. And so she got beyond her own pain. She got beyond her own impatience to self-pity, you know. I'm sure there were days that were very tough, but she was able to move forward and do what God had called her to do. And so when we, the death of the saints, I think another respect to that is dying to um, all the things that will weigh us down, whether it's our physical pain, mental health issues we might deal with, all the different things that will try and weigh us down, that we don't ignore it, don't belittle it, we admit that it's there, that we die to it, and we move forward to do the things that God has called us to do. We move forward to, to despite all those handicaps, to um, accomplish the things that God created us for, which is to serve Jesus, and bless others. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his sins. Whether that's the ultimate death and we go to be with him, the fullness of his presence forever, or whether that's here on the, in this life at the beginning of our Christian lives and we have said, okay, I accept the crucifixion of Christ as applying to me and I am now dead to sin and alive to Christ. Whether that means that as we be, grow as a Christian, we, we die more and more to our desires, to our way of wanting to do things, and we accept more and more the way that God wants us to live and become more Christ-like in our decisions and our character and our attitude. Whether that means we become dead to our pains and dead to the, the things that, that weigh us down, and even though they may still be there, we move forward in, in the strength that the world gives us to accomplish what he wants us to do. And all of these things, we can say, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his sins. Lord, thank you so much um, for bringing meaning to death. Help us to realize, Lord, that, that in every life, death must come at the end of our lives and even during our lives. Help us, Lord, to um, be prepared for that time when we face eternity. Help us, Lord, to, to come before you now, accept you, put you into our lives, to be, be made right with you so that we're ready for, for a precious and special time in eternity. And give us the strength, Lord, to die to ourselves now in this life, to die to sin, to die to the temptations to sin, to die to our own rights and our own way of doing things, to die to the, the temptations to um, wallow in, in whatever circumstances we are in. Give us the strength, Lord, to move forward, to become the people you've created us to be, despite our pains, despite the, the temptations we face. Help us, Lord, to be dead to ourselves, dead to our circumstances, and alive to you. And help us, Lord, to become more like you every day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day.